Good. So hello everyone, can you hear me from the back, back side? Hello guys. Uh, so my name is Alan and uh, I'm going to present to you today API proxy pattern and how it makes your software API calls uh, more usable and mackable during testing. So how many of you guys are working on client-side applications? So, yeah, so how many are back-end developers? Okay, that's nice. So, basically, API proxy pattern is not just reusable or dedicated into Vue.js. It's also applicable if you're doing Java, if you're doing uh, Node.js in the back end. You can still use this pattern because it's a generic design pattern. But in this case, I will try to showcase how to do it in JavaScript and how it makes your code more reusable, more mackable, and more lighter in terms of bundle size. So, yeah start so if you guys want to check out the demo application that i will share it's available in this bitly link it's the next one so it's a slide deck link if you want a reference later okay and let's start yeah so the agenda of this discussion is that what is a dis uh, proxy design pattern the problem that it solves and how to implement and improve because I will show you like the very basic usage of uh, proxy and then I will resume with a much better form of it which is usually used for larger scale applications and then uh, I will showcase as well a basic good and bad testing with uh, regards to API calls and then we will check out as well how JavaScript introduced a proxy pattern natively in ES6. So yeah, what is uh, basically a proxy pattern? So how many of you are using Nginx? Uh, so basically there's another concept related to Nginx wherein uh, a, a proxy, a reverse proxy is helping you to identify which background service are you going to hit if you try to hit a load balancer. So in code, it's a little bit different because uh, a proxy pattern enables you to centralize and uh, encapsulate the access to a certain object so that your consumers, meaning let's say you have modules in Vue.js, so you can abstract away the mechanism that you use to retrieve data in an API. Let's say, how many of you guys coded back in 2010? Like, when uh, Jake worried that Ajax rocks the world. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you have got, uh, I, I used to work for an application that is written in 2010 that is still maintained until now. So since we used proxies back then, we were able to migrate from jQuery to Angular to Vue. And it's really reusable uh, and it's quite uh, cool. So, so yeah. The basic concept surrounding it is that it's just a wrapper that encapsulates your API call inside a JavaScript module so that you can reuse it between uh, multiple components. So the common problem that you'll, uh, so this is how it looks like in drawing. I said too much, but it, it's just something as simple as this. So the proxy stands in the middle and uh, centralizes the access to your API. So. How many of you guys had worked on a large project wherein the API calls are distributed everywhere and nobody wants to maintain them because there are like five identical calls with several different parameter sets passed to it? Like, it, this has become chaotic when you distribute your API call. So a sample of it is uh, something that I am bringing here. So, so this is the perfect example of uh, repeat yourself. So if you see the mounted section of consumer A, I was retrieving uh, data from uh, localhost 3000 users endpoint. So in consumer B, since another developer is working on another module, he copies it and then, then the party is starting. So this one, the sample is uh, quite simple, but then when your backend developer gets started to get smarter, he'll tweak the parameter set and everything breaks down. Right, so if the guy in charge of module B is on vacation leave, he will not update it until he's back from wherever he is. So yeah, so it's the start of the problem. So how, so let's go back to the slides. 
So if you have a proxy, it's be this is how it basically looks like. So I know it's quite uh, blurred here, so let's just go to the code. So I have set in the GitHub project that I shared earlier, so the first sample of consumer A and B were uh, from ugly consumer project. So right now let's see how a proxy works or how it looks like. So this is a proxy sample of the version one of the application. So yeah, we have three consumers trying to consume a centralized proxy. So if you notice what I was doing here, I now have a user's proxy and I encapsulated the API call inside. So what, cap what capability does it bring to me? So first one, I'm decoupling my business layer, meaning my functional modules from the mechanism that I use to call my API, meaning your consumer modules can change without, uh, if let's say you want to migrate your application from Vue to React or to whatever framework is upcoming next. Since you have encapsulated the API calls inside, if you migrate your project, you can still reuse that thing. I mean the API layer, the proxy layer. So if you hard-coded your Axios call inside your modules, you won't be able to do this. Everything will just be gone after migration. And it's another cost for the business. So yeah, right now I'm using user's proxies here, and it looks like this at code. So yeah, so it's basically the counterpart of a repository pattern for those are the that are working on the back end. So you write a repository to access a single entity, right? So this is cool, this is nice. But it gets nasty when you're working with big projects. So what I meant by nasty is something that looks like this. You know, I had two operations here, no? First one is load all users, and then the second one is get by ID. So this is okay because it's a small proxy. But then if your proxy becomes bigger, something that, like a god object, let, we all have that one entity in the application that is so complex that you need at least 20 operations to manage it. So it will start to look like this. Yeah, so your proxy can still grow to this one. So this approach can still be improved by taking uh, a lesson from the CQRS pattern. But before we go to that, I would like to share something that I see in production every day that I really hate. That's why I introduced the proxy pattern in the, my workplace. So this is an API call that I'm uh, you know, in a legacy project that we're working on. And it's literally 1,300 lines. So when you try to import in, when you try to import this thing inside your tiny module in your application, it's like literally pulling a horse out of the web server because it's too big. So when you try to tree shake this thing, it's not gonna work because a lot of internal uh, private methods inside are coupled and married to each other already that tweaking something will break something somewhere because it's a centralized API call. So this is the first advantage that uh, proxies are trying to solve. So yeah, so let's say that I have a proxy per entity. Let's say users, like I have two operations to it. How can I make it even better? So, so you can even make that better by trying single responsibility principle approach. So when you say single responsibility, you forget about your entities and start working with entity dedicated operations. So in CQRS, if you're working on big, large scale applications, your APIs will usually be split to a lot of small pieces, like the rights are segregated from reads. So if you use proxy in this pattern, you will be able to scale into large scale application as well. So instead of having a single user's proxy, I created an operation-based proxy that, that uh, sounds like, a, you know, in the golden rule, in no, naming a class is that name it as a noun, right? But my, but my class right now is named as a verb. It starts with a verb. It looks like an action, which it literally is, because it's an operation that gets me the user by ID. So do you get what I mean? So from, from like a single huge proxy, I now split it into smaller pieces that look like this. So yeah, so what are the advantages of splitting to small? So if you're a web developer that will resume the work of your colleague, 
if the file is this small, I can read and understand without having so much pain in my head. Like, if you have like 29 of lines of code that you need to analyze, it's quite easy to pick up what is it trying to do, where is it getting to call, what are the parameters that I expect. And then, if you want to make a change to it, you're not nervous that it breaks something on the other side of the application because they share some uh, private wirings, private methods that break something when you tweak it for one consumer. So yeah. So right now I use uh, smaller proxies. And then I also mentioned earlier that it makes your testing more easy. So how many of you guys are performing unit testing that performs actual API calls? Like, OK, so this is going to be useful at, at times, but it's not something that is recommended. Because when you do unit testing, you would, would, you would really love to make sure that you don't rely on the internet for to, te to test the functionality of your units, meaning your functions. You want to test the behavior and not the network itself. So, and when you call an API, let's say zero, do you test zero in a unit test? No, you don't. You, you, you want to have a behavior that you can predefine, and when you use a proxy, you can easily substitute it. So, let's go back to the slides. Yeah, so API proxies are perfect for API calls. So this is a sample of bad consumption of APIs and how it generally looks like in drawing. So yeah, and this is how you use proxy in like in a better uh, modular fashion. And then you will have your unit testing, you know, when you have a proxy and your consumers, uh, you know, uh, consuming it, and it's the only operation for the API that is consumed, you can easily write a Mac object, meaning a predefined behavior that is dedicated for your testing that can easily substitute your proxy, meaning your consumers are now becoming more testable. So I have to prepare a sample test here that I can, that we can test. So, I mean, I can share. And just to prove to you that this really works well in production, I, have, I am bringing a source code here that will show you how many proxies do we have. Like, you will see a lot of API calls in here. So yeah, these are all our proxies. So, and proxies, like I mentioned earlier, don't just exist in the client side. You can write proxies if you want to, let's say, abstract the consumption of zero API in your background API, I mean backend API. Let's say you're consuming zero in the background. You can write proxy in your Node.js background application, backend application, and consume zero. So meaning if you want to use a change your invoicing uh, provider, your vendor, you can easily change it without breaking your controllers. So let's go to testing. So yeah, so I've written two tests here. So. Uh, we're going to test a uh, user counter module. So basically, it just counts the number of users in my system. And it depends on load all proxy. So inside, I had encapsulated Axios. But if we want to perform an automated unit test to it, I'm not supposed to call this one, and I need to substitute it. So a bad test would usually look like this. So the test is actually consuming the counters without a substitute for the API call, meaning if I perform the test, I'm actually calling it. So why is it bad? So let's say that our counter is expecting four when it was written. Let's say more users were introduced after the first initial test. Your test is going to break because your data is changing. So it's bad to test data that is hooked to your database or your APIs. So a good test would usually look like this so it involves mocking up a proxy layer so since i had written a proxy inside the user uh, inside the user counter function i can uh, alter the proxy i mean the mock function that it uses using third party library called mock require so yeah i'm using mock require to simulate and change the behavior of load all proxy by uh, predefining a set of users that I want to count. Uh, and so with the help of this, uh, I can make sure that I'm not cool calling any uh, third party API. So if you're working with payments, if you're working with invoicing, if you're working with author authorization, you know, I had a funny instance where I work on 
testing, but I'm noob, so I tried to test the authentication server and I got a black for some time because I hit the rate limit. Because you know I have 900 test cases and I tried to challenge the API module and it went really bad for me. <laughs> so yeah, so if you have your Mac, you can now avoid uh, performing actual API calls. If you live in the Philippines, connection is horrible. <laughs> so yeah, we suffer from it, and we need really, we need to really mark to make sure that we can test the functions that we are trying to automate. So yeah, that's all for me, and I hope I had shared something. So do you have question, guys?